uh, um, spaniel poodle cross that presented with a history of severe uh, pleural effusion um, with a mild cough. And so it had a um, CT scan performed which revealed a mass in the right cranial lung field. Uh, they did a bunch of diagnostics on it and uh, they were all non-diagnostic. And so we are, uh, they drain the chest. The pleural effusion has not recurred because we repeated the CT scan today. And so now we're going to explore and remove both the mass and the substernal lymph nodes, which are also enlarged. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications so you'll get a ding on your phone the next time we live stream. So I'm doing a right lateral thoracotomy. We um, potentially could have done a midline sternotomy, but getting into that dorsal, that right dorsal lung field, or the right dorsal thoracic field, would have been really challenging from a midline approach. So that's why we've decided to do the um, intercostal. And so I'm going for the right fourth intercostal space. I'm down to the latissimus dorsi here that you can see in the middle of my field. And given that I'm going so far dorsal, you can try to retract it out of the way, but again, given that I'm going so far dorsal, I am going to go ahead and, um, and divide that. Uh, if you guys have a second, just let us know where you're watching from. Nice. So I'm just dividing my latissimus dorsi here. I'm quite far dorsally. All right, and then I'm going to palpate cranially and count my ribs. And so uh, one, two, three, four, fourth intercostal space right here. So that's where we're going in. That's the scalenus, or serratus ventralis here. Get a smaller gelpie, please. So recheck, so one, two, three, four. So that's my space that I want to go in right there. And get our Gelpi retractor. And just to split apart that serratus ventralis, make it a little bit easier to see. That's great, thank you. So I'm just dividing my serratus ventralis. And so just counting again, one, two, three, four. So I'm going just caudal to this fourth rib. And we want to stay away from the caudal aspect of the rib itself because that's where our nerve and blood vessels are. Okay. So that's the external intercostal. Because it's on the outside? Oh no, the vertebrae, <laughs> the um, neurovascular is on the cranial of the portal. How? Don't be inferior. Right, good. So it runs on the inferior aspect. <laughs> what? So <laughs> I'm dividing the internal and external <laughs> intercostals here. You can see the pleura right there, and so now I'm going to pop into the pleura carefully so as not to damage the underlying lung. Okay, so I'm through the pleura there and that's lung. Sitting right there. So we're in the chest now. Got a little bit of effusion. We'll get our finichetto retractor in here. Go ahead and take out that. It's a big finichetto for this dog. 
Uh, the little one's too small. It's like, again, it's like Goldilocks. This one's too big and this one's too small. Uh, let me grab my Metsies here. Sure, this one is working. Now that's happy now. Just gotta give it something new to teach you, Yeah. Correctly. All right. So we're looking up. Got some fluid in there. I wasn't entirely convinced that there was a mass based on the CT scan. But we definitely have to go after the lymph node, and those have been aspirated before and were non diagnostic. So, so that might be esophagus, or that could be mass right there. Can we get a wet lap sponge, please? So that's the azygous vein right there. Yeah. Okay. So that's trachea right there. I believe that's just esophagus up there. Um, no, all good. Thank you. Sarah was just suggesting we pass a tube, which is not a bad idea. Good. So that's just kind of fibrotic. So, just, so that's a little bit atelectic there, but it doesn't look neoplastic. Just tucking our lung lobes back here, and in a couple of minutes you can stretch it open a little bit farther. So I can see my uh, vagus nerve right there. So it does look kind of inflammatory in here. Mm. Yeah, so that's the uh, cranial vena cava there. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to see if I can feel those lymph nodes. I might have to go into my mediastinum, so let's just open this up a little bit more. And the tendency is that as you spread the ribs apart, um, the cranial ribs tend to go farther or displace farther than the caudal ribs. And cat sandals? Yep. So if you center on a an intercostal space, you'll get more more cranial than caudal, yeah. So that's kind of where it looked like the mass was there, but there's nothing there. There's trachea there. So I think it might have been primarily fluid that we could see on the CT scan, but we've got quite a fibrotic looking mediastinum there with the vagus nerve sitting there. Can I get a um, Army Navy retractor, please? Give me your finger, Daniel. Just touch right there. Pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Anna, just right, right down here. Wow. It's always fun <laughs> touching the beating heart. We're starting to breathe up, Camille.
I think, uh, have you paralyzed? No, I Go ahead and uh, give the atricarium, please. Grab a guilty. Go up here this way. Dan, you can go down to that, please. So it does look kind of nasty yeah. and fibrotic, yeah. So that's all plural fat. All right, can I get my hook cautery, please? Do you need to get somebody else in here? Or Uh, where's a longer debakey? Um, yeah. And I'm sorry that you guys aren't going to be able to see. Um, I think I'm okay. Uh, shorter one? Yeah. Uh, thank you. Do we have a better set? Yeah. I might get the other Army Navy in here, Caudal, and just get you, Anna, to pull back on that. I'm just going to cut open the Mediastan and I'll take that long one, please, then. Thank you. Have a look at my CT scan. If you could um, jiggle the mouse, please, Camille. Pardon? Just jiggle the mouse, please, on the computer so I can see the CT scan. So that was definitely dorsal in it. About what rib? About the third rib. So. The mass that we could see would have been right here, so I think that that was just fluid. But we've got a lot of this fibrotic stuff, and I'm sorry that you guys won't be able to see it. Where's my... Do you want the quarter down to places? Sure. Thank you. Just opening up the mediastinum here. Let's try to find the lymph node. Could that fibrosis just be kind of secondary to a pleuritis? Or? Uh, it could be. Got a little bit of bleeding somewhere in here. Can I get some suction? Mm -hmm. Just to figure out where that's coming from. Get some saline, please. Mm -hmm. Ah, that's fine. We'll use the. Be careful for the phrenic nerve. Mm -hmm. Keep suction in place for me. On the sternum there, I can feel a lymph node right here. And 
and the internal thoracic vessels are right underneath it. Apologize that you guys can't see what I'm doing. So I'm just kind of dissecting it out bluntly with my finger. It's got a huge vessel sitting right underneath it. Mm. Alright, so that's my node there, which is really large. See that come out? So that'll have to go off for his to pass. I'll mm. just palpate again to see if I can feel there was another node in here. There it is. Okay. And that looks more than reactive to me. And it was kind of calcified on the um, on the scan, come underneath that with a ligature. Yeah. And why was it having pleural effusion? It wouldn't have pleural effusion from that. Yeah. So, I'm just reviewing, I'll go back through all of the lungs and palpate them on the right side, so that all feels pretty normal here. That's some fat down there that we can see on the scan. So we'll just go back through the lung lobe. So this is right cranial lung lobe here, and that's just atelectasis. Can you give us a bag and hold, please, Camille? Just watch what happens when we bag and hold. That's gonna reinflate. Some degree, anyway. Mm. All right, and so, uh, yeah, just a second. You can keep back breathing for it, and then when I get this other lung lobe exposed. So that's caudal lung lobe there. Oh no, that's middle. Make sure I don't give it a lung lobe torsion. Which I was trying to do. Okay, so that looks pretty normal there, and that's caudal over here, and that's going to be attached by a ligament caudally, and so I probably won't be able to completely exteriorize that, but it feels pretty normal. Alright, so that's just apexial muscles there, that's azygous. I can feel bronchus right there. And all of our lung lobes, make sure we haven't given it a torsion. All right, so, um, can we please, um, do we have warm saline? Uh, no. Let's go ahead and get some warm saline, please. Get us two packs of number two nylon, a chest tube, some hemostats. Thank you. I'll get my little baggie over there. Make sure that you can see the whole field. Whoops.
And did, yeah, and did I get two packs of number two or just one? Okay, thank you. Thank you, that should be plenty of hemostats. All right, so what we'll do is we'll pull out our finichettos. And we'll drop in a chest tube. Do we have a chest tube? Thank you. And a right angle forcep. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to tunnel my right angle underneath the skin. And then I'm going to pop through the chest and then flip it around. Yeah. And then we'll just grab onto the chest tube, pull it through. Let me get some epivacane, please. lay this down. We had a case when I was a resident that we pulled the chest tube out. Yeah. It wasn't my case, it was one of my resident mates' cases, but we pulled the chest tube out and the dog acutely died. And I think what had happened was that the chest tube had wrapped around the lung lobe oh, and it just amputated, it. yeah. So, Are you yeah. I don't think we need to because we haven't done anything to the lungs. You can lavage a bit if you'd like. See how mobile that, that cranial yeah, rib right, is. Really yeah. Just go ahead and you can yeah. just yeah, just squirt some in there. And are there any questions that people are asking or Right, thank you. I'm just going to inter uh, inject our nerve in that intercostal space, and then I'll just squirt it on the muscle surface there. I'll take my first suture, please. And we can use, um, so we'll cut off the needle. Can I get another, can I get another packet, please? I'll just cut that off there. And Sarah will hand you the right angles and the suture. And sorry, the debakey's in the suture. So then I'm just going to pass my right angles through. Hold on to that, please. The reason why I'm doing this is so that we don't lacerate lung. Sorry. So, so if you use your finger to keep it tight and then push it down deep to the right angle. Yeah. Right. And then we'll hemostat that. Um, Hannah, can you turn that big knob right there anti-clockwise? Other way. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. All right. So. Yeah. How much you got?
next? Number two nylon. Did we get a third pack? Yeah, you did. Okay. Thank you. You have more in here, that's over there. And we won't need a hemostat on this one, so I'll just tie that while Sarah tightens the two in front or on top. So Sarah's pulling on the two above, and that's just going to partially tighten the ribs together and oppose them. Um, yeah, you're all good. And there's a study that came out recently that showed that there was no difference in outcome between using wire versus <laughs> using suture for midline sternotomies. Even in big dogs, which I found. Yeah. So I have always used just suture. I very rarely use wire. And the, the I don't like using wire because number one, it's harder. And number two, there's a risk of penetrating the lung um, as you're passing the, that very mm -hmm. stiff wire around the sternobrae. Can I get some 2 PDS, please? And so at this point, the chest is not quite sealed. And so we'll have to put in a Gelpie retractor, hold the latissimus dorsi out of the way, and then we'll just close um, the serratus ventralis down into scalenus at the bottom. I think that's scalenus down there. And then we can start evacuating the chest. I think it's important to mention that we're leaving that open while we're doing 
Uh, really important, yeah, that Sarah just mentioned that we leave the chest tube open to room air while we're closing because otherwise you can inadvertently create a tension pneumothorax. And we do have this patient on a ventilator. You can do them without a ventilator, and I've done a lot of thoracotomies without a ventilator, but um, it's just a little bit more labor intensive for the nurses. Um, the other issue is that potentially, uh, if you're not providing adequate pressure during your ventilation, by doing it by hand, you can get atelectasis at the end of the procedure. So when I first opened my referral practice in America, I didn't have a ventilator. And my nurses actually complained when I bought a ventilator because they said that they felt like they would lose control of the anesthetic. And once I got used to using the ventilator, then they were very happy to use it. But in fact, they would complain if I didn't have a ventilator. Mm -hmm. but But it's just that, you know, so I've done lots of lung loop masses and PDAs and PRAAs and stuff with just uh, manual ventilation. Just breathe six to ten times a minute. Make sure that you have an end tidal CO2 monitor. Okay. So now I'm closing latissimus dorsi. So nothing too exciting on this thoracotomy except for those big nasty lymph nodes. The vein that it was that vessel that the lymph node was kind of sitting in, was that the internal, internal thoracic? thoracic? Yeah. yeah. Do you know what it's called in human? No. Is the mammary mammary artery and vein and that's what they use for that's one of your main coronary artery bypass vessels so they because it's arterial they just hook that directly up to the um the usually they use into the um, coronary artery distally and yeah and that was definitely a bypass procedure when i was growing up um, but now they do them just um, as a non-bypass procedure, just I mean? like not putting them on oh, the pump. Oh, they don't put them on bypass. Yeah. I think they still do sometimes, but sometimes they don't. Um, they just do so it. So they do all that with the heart still beating? Yeah. So it's beating or heart, beating heart surgery. They've got a little device Something that stabilizes. Like moving, moving target. Yeah, they do. They have a device that stabilizes the myocardium just in the area where they're operating. It's like a little clamp. So I'm finished with the latissimus dorsi, and then I'll just convert this into a sub-Q suture, just to get a better seal. And then we can start evacuating the chest. You can start now, Anna. I broke my suture, and so I'm just gonna, I replaced another suture. Go ahead and cut that for me, please. Just that guy, yeah. And I'll just tie to this loop. <laughs> okay. Can we get some more two O P D S? All right. So I'm going to hand off to Sarah, and she can finish up sub Q and intradermal. I'll come over and make sure there aren't any questions that I didn't answer. No questions. It's Nothing at all. All around. Oh, nice. Um, all right. So.
Alright. I'll just flip through and see if there's anybody that I need to specifically mention. I should have a few more surgeries to stream today. Um, and so hopefully I'll see you again soon. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications so you'll get a ding on the, your phone the next time we live stream. And we will see you later on. Thanks again. Bye.